Welcome to the podcast that's dedicated to helping business owners to prepare for exit so you can maximize value and exit on your terms. This is the Exit Insights podcast presented by Succession Plus. I'm Daryl Bates Brownsword, and today I'm joined by Shane Lucas from AVN. Welcome, Shane. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Daryl. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, good stuff. So, Shane, look, AVN, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about AVN because this is a slightly different um, angle to what I normally take on the Exit Insight podcast. So uh, I think it'd be a nice little bit of background for, for listeners to just to hear about what you do and um, uh, that'll set the context for them. Yeah, by all means. So, yeah, you're quite right, AVN. Um, we're probably different from your typical audience in that we specialise in working purely with accountants. Why accountants? Um, well, personally, I'm not an accountant. I want to get that clear. But I work with accountants because actually I'm passionate about helping business owners in general to achieve a much better, more profitable business that actually works for them rather than feeling like a slave to their customers and their clients and to the business in general. Um, now, accountants, I'm married to the profession pretty much. I've worked with accountants for 25 years. I'm married to an accountant. And um, I see accountants being in a great position to help more and more of the business owners that they work with to achieve more success in their business. And so predominantly, AVN help accountants first and foremost to achieve a much more successful business themselves. And then we teach them the skills to be able to better support the business owners that they're working with so that actually through those accountants and including those accountants, we're helping far more business owners to improve their business. That's the nutshell version anyway. That sounds like uh, something that's been shared just once or twice before. <laughs> it might have been. <laughs> Beautiful. And, and it's, it's, the reason I wanted to get you on the, on the show, Shane, is because we normally look at accountants as the first people we go to to help us. And, and the reality is that accountants are running businesses too. Accountants are, accountants are people too. And, um, and I know that you put in the disclaimer, I'm not an accountant. Neither am I. Um, but accountants run their business and they go through all the same feelings, expressions and, and growth strategies that they have to to run and build their business. And at some point they want to exit their business as well. Um, yeah. And we tend to perhaps put accountants on a pedestal. Uh, and, but you're, you're here to share, well, accountants are, are running businesses and here's what I do to help accountants. They, they want to improve their business. They want to build a better business for all exactly the same reasons as every other business owner does. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so uh, Shane, I'm just thinking, what are some of the differences before we jump into exit planning for accounting practices? What are some of the fundamental differences between an accounting practice and, and, and other businesses that you experience? Well, ultimately, I mean, yes, that the fundamentals of business are, are going to be the same across any business, aren't they? You know, you, you need to you need to get customers, you need to deliver whatever product or service it is to them and you need to bill for that work and it has to be profitable. Um, accountants probably differ from a lot of other businesses in that their their customers, they refer to them as clients because they are they usually kind of work with them for many years. It's not a one off transaction. So they have that recurring income, although for many accountants out there, that, that recurring income tends to be annually charged uh, and after the fact. One of the things that we help them improve is actually just putting them on, spreading that, that, um, that income over the month. So putting their customers on a direct debit, they're on a retainer, um, which actually helps from a cash flow point of view. Uh, but yeah, uh, they, they still have the same challenges. They've still got to get the customers. They've got to get good quality customers as well. Yep. Uh, and many accountants, just like most people in business, they know how to do their trade, whatever it is that they've learned to do, whatever skills they've developed. But sadly, those skills don't necessarily extend to marketing, sales, um, you know, uh, and all of the, the peripheral uh, aspects of running a business. So you know, it, it doesn't matter whether you're a plumber, a baker, a candlestick maker, um, you know, you still have to uh, have those other business skills. And that's what we tend to teach them. OK, so so what you're confirming is that an accounting practice, call it a practice, it's it's another business, just like everyone else. 
they've got to hire staff, they've got to build the business, they've got to, um, the founders of the business um, probably suffer from the, the same control freakishness as every other entrepreneur and business founder. They've got to figure out how to let go and delegate and, and trust other people with, with working with their clients. Uh, they're very much trusted relationships. They love looking after clients just like uh, everyone does. They want to add value to their clients and they, they, they want to you know, look after their business and keep their clients for a long time and have long-term relationships with them. And Absolutely. what you're doing is going, hey, look, how do we, you know, accountants have a business model where they, they have a lot of businesses as clients. And what you're saying is, hey, look, let me help you add additional value to your clients. You know, let's look at the, you know, the, we look, we tend to look at accountants initially, they're doing tax and, and compliance work, all that stuff that we hate doing and we don't want to understand let's offload it to the accountant. We kind of have to have it to, to stay legal and compliant in business. Because accountants have those relationships and they're doing that, they, they understand our businesses. It puts them in a prime position to really understand what else we need to do. And that's where you're coming in, if I understand it. <clears throat> it is. Uh, yeah, I mean, you've said that perfectly. Um, you've described the perfect situation there. And accountants, their skills are with numbers. And now, sadly, many accountants out there, um, they're, because of the way that they run their business, what they, they create is a bit of a, a monster in that they've got so many clients that they're just churning out the numbers yeah. instead of actually being able to sit down with the client and talk about those numbers and how, by making some small improvements to just some of those numbers, that the, the outcomes could be so much better from a profitability point of view, from a, an efficiency point of view, allowing business owners maybe to work fewer hours for generating the same or even more income. Yeah. And by putting those better efficiencies in place for the accountants, that's freeing up their time to allow them to have those more meaningful discussions with their clients. Yeah, that's, and that's where the value is, right? It's, mm, it's Absolutely, yeah. People, people of, do value that. Yeah, absolutely. So... So let's get a bit of the nitty gritty stuff. Like, uh, how do you value an accounting practice? Like, is, is it different to any other business? Um, my experience doesn't stem into exit values on many other businesses. So I, I can talk to you from a, an accountancy business point of view in that I think up to around the half million mark, it tends to be based on what they call uh, one times GRF. So GRF stands for the gross recurring fee income. So as I, as I mentioned with clients, they tend to have, uh, sorry, with accountants, they tend to have their clients stay with them for the long term. So whatever the, 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 the total income is, their revenue, um, it tends to be around that mark that they'll pay up to half a million in revenue. Yep. So, um, you know, if you turn it over just 100K, somebody else might buy that from you for around the 100K mark and probably spread that over a, an earn-out period, maybe two or three years. Over half a million, then it switches more to the EBITDA. It's not consistently around the half a million, but it might be based on that. And of course, some of the things that we help them do is, you know, as with any business, there are certain multipliers that can be put in place to increase the value and the, the um, saleability of a business. Uh, and if you can increase it, even on the, the one times GRF mark, if you can increase that to 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, etc., then that's going to uh, make the, the value obviously much better for them. And likewise with the EBITDA, if we can make it much more profitable and add some of those multipliers to them, then it, it, uh, it adds to the sell value. Okay. So when it comes to working with an accounting business, it sounds like um, yeah, the first thing to do is to get them over half a million pounds in revenue, um, and then that steps up a valuation piece. And I guess that half million pound means naturally there's more people in the business. So you've got a bit more of a, a nucleus to work with. You know, there's more people involved. So therefore, there's, there's more likely there's more clients will stick and it spans beyond the, uh, the, the founder of the business. So we get them past half a million pounds revenue, their, their valuation changes. What are some of the things you do with um, with them to get them their business ready for exit? You know, let's say we've got one of your your the businesses you're working with. They're saying, Shane, look, I've been running the practice for for 20 years now. I'm I'm you know early 60s. I'm I'm thinking of getting out in the next let's say two or three years. How can you help me? 
Yeah, it's a great question. And let me emphasize that obviously we don't specialize in, in making a business saleable. That's, that's your area of expertise. But what we do specialize in is in making a business profitable, work for the business owner, not the other way around. Allow yeah. the business owner to almost take a step out of it completely. Because my belief, in, you know, of, of what a business is, is something that should work for the business owner, not the other way around. Yeah. And ideally should be, a, a, you know, it should have the right team in place, the right systems in place and, you know, the culture and all, all of the, the other stuff that's going to allow that business to operate without the business owner having to be present. So as a consequence of the stuff that we do with accountants, they've created a much more successful business that doesn't rely on the business owner. And as a happy consequence of that, it's much more saleable and much more valuable as well. It's, it's interesting the way you, you've just used exactly the same story, but in the reverse order to what we share. Um, you know, sometimes business owners come to us and say, I want to get out of the business, um, help me get the business exit ready. We prepare the business, we put all those systems and processes and work on the intangible assets and, and improve the profitability and the business ends up depending on the owners less. It removes a whole lot of stress and they'll go, hey, look, this is uh, look, I've changed my mind. Maybe I'll just hang around for another couple of years because I'm enjoying working in the business a whole lot longer. It's, it's not as stressful. It's more fun. And uh, yeah, so it's exactly the same principle. You know, if I've got a business that exit ready, I don't have to exit it. It's just a more attractive business and it's a lower risk for A, the owners in the business to be operating it and B, for anyone who does happen to want to acquire it, it's more attractive to them because it is lower risk. That, that future ongoing revenue is, is more likely to stick, um, is probably more profitable than a standard, let's say, practice. So you're going to achieve a higher than industry average multiple you started talking about the 1.1s, the 1.2s, but then I guess that's also reflected in the bigger businesses. Mm. So it's just a better business to be involved in all round. I'm guessing that also um, cascades down to all of the staff where they start to get more career options within the business just because it's, it's better structured. Um, and when a business is systemized, you know, I don't know if you notice this, but it tends to, you know, people have concerns around systems that it's going to, tighten and, and stranglehold everything but in my experience the most systemized business are the most creative and innovative because they're not stressed about those bits and pieces do, do you see that in, in accounting practices yeah absolutely i mean we we've been so passionate about systems since gerber released the e-myth book many many years ago uh, okay. and it's something that is is one of the the crucial things that we help people put in place I run a fully systemized business here, and it is fantastic, but one of the, the main concerns that people raise is, are, are you not just employing a bunch of robots that are following systems? You know, I thought you, you wanted a creative, innovative team. And of course, you, you can still put those mechanisms in place, but you systemize the process of putting ideas forward. So what tends to happen in a lot of companies is that one employee might have a great idea, I can do this differently, and then maybe that's a good idea, maybe it's not. But what's happened is they've suddenly started going off on a tangent from the rest of the business. You've, you've created inconsistency. Yep. Whereas when you put the idea in and it's, it's accepted by the, the people within the business that should be accepting these things that, to change it, then they can change that one system and suddenly everybody's doing it that better way. So, um, yeah, the beauty of systems is that it, it is a business that runs like clockwork, but you also have the systems in place for um, welcoming and, and, and dealing with ideas that come in and deciding whether or not to, to apply those across the board or in a, a small you know, trial area, a sample yeah. area. We're, we're not making things up or, or, or learning or designing a process from scratch every time we do it. It mm. gives us consistency. Um, and then you also economies of scale because if we've got a business that's got several... I guess, um, conveyor belts, if you like, of people or teams doing the same thing. If all teams are doing things the same way, you get those economies of scale and it enables people to fill gaps when, when others are, are ill or, or on leave or what have you. So, Shane, have you got some stories of um, you know, experiences or case studies of, of, of examples of, of a practice that you've worked with to help them grow and build a, a more profitable business that... Uh, that, that tells the story of the owner? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Val springs to mind. She's recently sold her business. She joined us. She was only turning over about just under 150K. And 
She was working flat out. She got a couple of team members working with her as well. And uh, she was <laughs> constantly stressed. She was working between 60 and 70 hours a week. Yep. And, and not in a good position. She was under charging. She got a large pool of clients. So she was on that conveyor belt, you know, the daily treadmill, etc. And we started working with her. I forget exactly what year it was now, but it was about four, maybe five years ago. Uh, very quickly, we helped to put the, the mechanisms in place so that it could reduce the workload and the pressures and the stresses on her uh, and put the, the, the mechanisms in place as well to attract better quality clients. She started to say goodbye to some of the poor quality clients that were time-wasting and, and not profitable, etc. So she really started to refine the client base, refine her pricing uh, and grow the business. So... Um, before long, she'd achieved around the 700k mark in terms of turnover. And she announced to us a, just a couple of years ago, actually, that she wanted to sell. And uh, she actually wanted to be able to sell, take a year out, and then start up a completely different business doing yoga. Wow. So completely uh, step away from the accountancy world. Um, I mean, while she was with us, she won many awards for really changing her business around. And actually, one of the, the, the awards that she won was on changing lives. She'd really embraced the, you know, the whole concept of delivering business advisory to her clients. She stood on our stage and told this incredibly emotional story about where she just spent a little bit of extra time talking to one of her clients, really understanding some of the problems that they had personally, and then looked at how can the business be developed to maybe help her overcome some of these personal challenges as well. It was very emotional. Literally, a whole audience of accountants were in tears at, at this. She won uh, many awards uh, over the period of time with us. But actually, when it came to selling, and the only reason she spoke to me was to see if I could introduce her to some people, which I did, but actually it sounds like she sold it to somebody else anyway. But actually, she got 1.7 times... The, the value for this, because it's got a great team culture, it's got uh, all of the systems in place, it's got all automatic mechanisms in place for lead generation, lead nurturing, coming on board, you know, it's got all of those things in place. Clients were paid on direct debit monthly, so she got a good recurring monthly income. And, you know, it, it was a, a practice that didn't rely on her at all. She'd already stepped out massively. I think she was doing maybe a day or two a week in that business, but it was more customer relationships. So actually, from a, you know, a buyer's point of view, it's a perfect business that you can just buy. It carries on running and then you can start to implement change in your own time. So that was a brilliant story from her point of view. And I, that, that is a great story. And so, so not only did you five time, help her five times the revenue, but um, the valuation moved from 1 to 1 1.1 times 1 1.7 times. So a significant kicker on the valuation. That's a real double whammy there. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, it was even more than I expected. I knew she'd get more because of the, the mechanisms that she put in place. But now she did a, a terrific job there. Yeah. And, and you've moved from, you know, from her perspective, Val's perspective, she's moved from doing what, what sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm told is, tedious compliance work where you're just doing it, the clients don't value it, but it has to be done, to where you, you, you said she was working with clients and, and really making an impact on their lives. And, mm. and they're the things that the clients are going to remember is how they you know, added value in an impact way. They're, they're not really going to thank you for submitting their tax returns and, uh, and doing that basic stuff. So, so that's pretty exciting as well. And then the third win I see there is the, is the practice that purchased her. I'll bet they didn't purchase her because of a client base i bet they purchased her because they've seen what she's doing in her business and they're going right if we buy the system if we buy what we what she's doing we can roll that through the rest of our business and yeah even if they're bigger than her which you know in most cases they are they get a triple whammy as well that's yeah, yeah now that's don't you right. wish you could do that all day every day Exactly, yeah. I mean, she'd, she'd obviously got the mechanisms in place to train new team members on delivering the advisory because from, from a business owner's point of view, if she were to move just from doing the compliance to just delivering advisory herself, then the business is still reliant on her. She's moved from working in the business in one area to in the business in another. Exactly. And, and that tends to be the starting point for a lot of people, but then it has to transition to getting the team involved and trained up yeah. and, and build their confidence and skills in doing it. 
Yeah, and, and making sure you've got the training and, and, and templates and systemized and education mm. so that everyone can do it at the level with, A, you know they're comfortable doing it and, and you know that the clients are also comfortable with, with whoever they're working with in the business. So, look, Shane, so brilliant stories. It's what we've learned today is that, you know, accounting practices are just like any other practices uh, or business when it comes to growing, developing them and, and increasing the valuation. Accountants want to exit their business and they want to exit on their terms and, and get the most from their life's work, just like everyone else. We may hold them up on a pedestal, um, but they're going through, they're experiencing all the same stresses that we are as, as every business owners is all the same anxieties and they're, they're looking for help for, and, and, and you're providing that help um, to help them take their business to the next level and help them prepare, whether it be for just increasing the valuation or removing the daily stresses of running a business and, and having that peer group and that, that someone who understands you and guides you through that mess. It's exactly the same as always. Look, one, one last question I can, if I may, Shane, is... I ask this of all the guests, and, and that is, what's the one message you want the listeners? Like, I've, I've summed up, but what's the one thing you really want listeners to take away from our conversation today? The one message. Um, for me, I, I think one of the things I find so crucial, uh, and it's really a game changer for people, is to work with an external person, a business coach. What, whatever your business is, you know, if you look at the most successful people around the world, they didn't wait to become a success and then tap into the expertise of a, a coach. They started off getting the, 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 you know, somebody who's coaching them. Now, you know, there are coaches, there are mentors, there are consultants, there are variations on, on those. For me, a, a true coach, the definition of a coach for me is somebody who's not going to tell you what to do and how to do it so much as challenge your thinking and, yeah. and actually just get you to think about things in a different way than we're, we're accustomed to because that develops you as an individual and they'll get you to look at things now don't get me wrong it's also uh, useful to tap into maybe a mentor and a consultant who does know how to to implement and, and do certain things as well so i think tapping into that external help is crucial whether you're just starting up or whether you're just looking to exit i think it's crucial to get that external help yeah brilliant hey shane Thank you. Thanks for sharing your insights with us today. Really appreciate your thoughts. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you for inviting me, Darren.